testing, testing. Hello, you there? Hi. Sorry, hey, I'm loading. How's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Yeah, um, everything going good in class? I am struggling. Really? Yeah. Uh, are you in uh, session A or are you in session C? Uh, session A. Okay, so yeah, it's a little more fast paced, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> and I've never used Maya, so I'm like having a really, really hard time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Maya's uh, pretty tricky, not the most user-friendly application out there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard doing it online and not in person. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, um, John Hintages is a really good professor and like explains things really well, but still it's like, really hard to like, I don't know, when I was taking the class, I, I had questions like every five minutes. So <laughs> well, that was, it was me, especially on the first, I did so bad on the ORCA model and I like couldn't do the um, tutoring cause I was like working during those times and I should have just emailed him and asked for like a meeting. But I was like, I'd figure something out. And then like a couple minutes later, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. And then I was having to like YouTube how to do things. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that's rough. Um, I know I only have like one hour uh, per week, but like I'm flexible on that time. If it doesn't work for you, then like just let me know and we can work something else out. Um, okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, but uh, okay, so you're working on um, the, let's see, the, the lattice. lattice right pulled up. Yes, and I didn't want to start it because I'm like, I'm just gonna <laughs> ask for like how how to exactly start this. Okay, so you haven't started yet. All right. I do have um, it pulled up though. Sorry? I do have it pulled up in front of me. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, if you wanna screen share, I don't know if you have anything to show, but it sounds like you haven't started right, so. Um, okay. What um what's your biggest issue first off with Maya in general? Like what um what do you struggle with the most, do you think? I think just trying to figure out like what does what exactly and like how to use some of the tools properly. I feel like that's what I'm struggling with. Cause I'll watch his videos and then I'm like trying to like do the project and I'm like, I don't know how to like do it I guess <laughs> if that makes sense like it's hard yeah yeah so like following along step by step you get stuck pretty often yeah and then if I like mess up on something I'm like oh shoot I don't know how to like fix it properly okay uh let's see someone else is coming in let's admit them okay. see if they have this issue okay hello Quentin Yeah, if you guys are struggling with the same thing, maybe we can all work together on it. Hello, you there? Well, maybe. <laughs> okay, so um, are you wanting help with the assignment specifically or um, just working through some of the, uh, the 
videos and like the practice stuff there? Um, probably the assignment, I would say. Yeah, okay. All right, so have you messed around with the lattice sculpting? Have you done like the follow along, like followed along with anything in the videos? I was watching his videos, but I didn't follow along. That can be pretty helpful um, if okay. you are able to like just have it open in one in another window and um, just like get a feel for what he's talking about because it's really hard to relate back to um, different concepts when you have to go back and do it like a few days later, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see though. I'm gonna open up my light. Let's start off with my first version of that assignment. And then I can kind of show you um, the goal. It's nice to like know what you're working towards. Yeah. Uh, sign me out. Um, what um, what issues did you have with the last assignment? Um, like what marks did you get taken off for that? Oh my gosh, I got a bunch. <laughs> Let me see. Because it helps to have specifics, so that way I know like what you. Yeah, because I know someone commented like, "Oh, go to tutoring." Um, let's see. I know it was with like the layers. Um, like okay, setting so up like, layers correctly. Okay, so like more of an organization issue, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, okay, here it is, exercise three. And we start off with a logo. That one's pretty easy. The logo one? Mm-hmm pretty fun too, just messing with that. It's all about like beveling basically. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, if you can get like some more specifics on what kind of feedback you receive, then that'll help me um, figure out more what we need to focus on. But it sounds like some uh, organization is gonna be important. Um, and I also I, said front and side images could not be loaded. I think they must have been referenced to the wrong place. That was on a few of them. Front and side images, like the reference images weren't in there. Okay. Yeah. Did you remember like uploading them and maybe you just didn't set them up properly? I remember having them on there, but maybe they just weren't set up properly. Uh, hey guys, I'm late, but I had that same issue and something with the project directory was wrong, but I, yeah, I don't know what I did wrong, but I got it wrong. Yeah, okay. a handful. Um, so yeah, project directories are an issue pretty uh, commonly, I feel like, um, mostly because they're not uh, set up to your root drive, and so there's like another folder you have to go through them to um, get there and the way that Maya like accesses um, the project that you set, you set it in a specific location and then it follows that path. So right. if you were to like put your project directory directory in like your documents folder, then um, when the graders go to open it, they're not gonna be able to access it because they won't have that same folder. Oh, okay. Um, like, I think that's what happened with a lot something more obscure, like, or if you put it on your desktop, that'll break it too. That's exactly what happened to me. Specific user and nobody else can access your user. 
So the key there is like, if you have a hard drive, that's the best place to put it on like a separate drive okay. from your computer. If you don't, okay. you can still put it on like, I don't know, like a cloud drive. I do that sometimes, or um, mm -hmm. you can put it on your C drive. You just have to make sure that it's not going on the desktop and that it's not mm -hmm. going in the documents folder. It's in like the root of your drive. Okay. Um, and then once you get into Maya, you have to, before you start saving anything, you have to set the project and right. you have to tell it where to route to. Um, and so you have to like establish that folder set up before you go in and um, you can't just like change where you're saving it. Um, so I wonder sure if I messed that. up my top and side views as well. For yeah, I used to have the same issue was the sides. Okay, Did you so, um, see the project direct directory correct or no? I'm assuming not. I thought I was like keeping everything in the same place, but a lot of it was saying like things are missing, which I had. Oh, okay. So I must have just something must have not been right. Yeah, I'm in the same so boat. Sounds like we should go through the Orca first then. Um, and then we can go through the lattice sculpting, but it sounds like this is- a I haven't even started the, um, the new project yet. Okay, no worries. Still got all weekend. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do a little screen share. And um, I didn't see on the rubric that the other um, uh, projects are going to be graded by the project directory and whatnot, but should I assume they are? Um, they all are, yeah. Ah, uh, crap. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, you just have to make sure that, like, you're, you're setting up that project and that you're saving it to the root drive every time. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, let's see. I put the references here. Can you see that? Yes. Um, I wish there was a way to like, I guess I can draw. Yeah, references right there. Okay, so you go in and when you're putting a reference in, you have to go from the, uh, the main screen, the um, four view, and then right. let's see. What did I do before? Camera, image plane, yeah, import image here. So view, image plane, import image, and then I can take this side view and I can open it and then you can see it there. But the key with this is to make sure you're doing it in the right window. So you see how I did this in the side window? Mm -hmm. um, that's because I need that perspective to be aligned and then you can move it with your transform tools from there. Um, so then I can align it here, but I have to, uh, you know, set it in that view. And then I can go ahead and I can create a new layer out of it. So if you hit this button, create a new layer, or even better with the selected, create a new layer and assign selected objects. I can make that layer. I can press this button to turn it into a reference. So now it says R. And then I can toggle it on and off as I need to use it or not use it. And it is set officially as a reference. You just have to make sure okay. you add a layer with it that you put it in the right panel, the right perspective view, depending on what it is, and that you um, that you rename it appropriately and mark it off as reference. Okay. So that's the key with that. Um, what did you guys end up doing? You put it in, but then put it didn't put it in a layer. Well, I know for mine, like I thought I had them in two separate layers, and then when I would try to turn them off, you know, like at the end, only like one of the reference pictures would go away and then the other one was stuck there. So okay. I don't know what happened there. Um, you might be toggling the V button too, that is visibility. Um, or maybe accidentally hitting like Cause like at the end when they wanted to like the screenshots, like the one reference picture wouldn't go away even though I was trying to like 
hit the view. So I don't know what I did wrong. Something was like messed up. If you don't have it in as a layer, then you can't really toggle it. Okay, so I must so, have just not had it. If you want, we can go into your project and see for sure, because I don't really know unless they see it. But um, okay. that's like, you might have also um, pressed the wrong button. You might have pressed like a new create new layer button and then not assigned mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you might have had a layer, but it might have been an empty layer. So okay. when you start a project and you need to create a reference, um, the best thing to do is like assign it immediately and then immediately also uh, toggle it, see if it right. responds to that toggle. If it doesn't, then that means it's not on that layer. Okay. So, yeah. And then you could do the same for top. You just go here, image plane, import, do it in the right viewpoint, and then you've got that too. But uh, yeah. That's it for reference images, honestly. There's nothing else really to do with that. Um, what other issues did y'all have? It sounded like you had um, some layers issues and that that was probably it right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to read the comments. Yeah, it just said front and side images cannot be loaded because the images were referenced to, it looks like like on my computer. So that's probably better for me to do it like in the hard drive or on a hard drive. Yeah, that's the exact same uh, grade I got too. Hello. So front and side images could not be loaded because Hello. the images reference a folder that is not present present in the submitted work. Wait, sorry, say that one more time. Uh, I think I got the same grade as here. It says uh, front and side images could not be loaded because the images uh, reference to folder that is not present in submitted work. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's a project directory issue. Um, so when I brought that in from image plane import, um, you see how these two images are in my source images folder? And then the direct line before that is Epps Rachel Orca. That's your project directory. That folder right there is what you need to set as your project directory. And then anything you import into Maya, you need to put in your source images folder. Um, and then, yeah, if you can have it like right at the root of a drive, then that makes it the easiest to get to. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Um, do you guys have uh, external hard drives? Yes. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, use those. Um, and then you should be good to go. Um, so was there anything else for the Orca, or do you want me to move on to Lattice? I got to hop out and go to work, but that did answer my questions for the Orca, so thank you. No problem. And um, I was just telling Colette, if you ever have any uh, issues and you can't make it to this session, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll schedule something that works in your time frame. I was trying to find you on Slack, but I couldn't, so I'll just send you an email. Yeah, either way, whatever works. Awesome, thank you. No problem, have a good one. Christian, what, uh, what questions do you have? Anything about the Orca? We were about to go into lattice sculpting, if not. Yeah, no, that's, I, I just, uh, the lattice for sure. The Orca, I think that was already great, it wasn't it? Yeah, they were just asking some like project directory questions. Oh, about got it, it. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm on to the lattice now, so. <laughs> okay, cool. And then, um. So what I'm, another thing with the setting the project directory, what I'm doing here is like every time I open a new project, before I do, I hit set project and then I change which one I'm working on. So we go to exercise three, set, and now I can open a scene and it immediately opens to the scenes for that project. So. I'm in here. How do I erase an annotation? Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. So, uh, here in the uh, lattice sculpting, you start off with um, 3D text. And uh, this one, 
I feel like the most common issue is um, not being able to find Arial Bold. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you, I, I guess you said you haven't started. I don't know if Christian, you have started or anything. Um, well, yeah, no, I was getting ready to actually to start this one. I, I finished the lattice um, and I just wanted to make sure that that with the lattice, you know, with the shape or whatever, is that um, that you just match the shape, right? With the points? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So let me go in there. I mean, what I, the way I did it was I just, went with the front view and then selected each point and then tried to get it. Yeah. So, um, and then went to the next view and then the next view, not, you know, um, trying to stay within the X and Y, you know, of that view or whatever it is, you know, the two, yeah. Yeah. because, you know, if you start, you know, I noticed if you start grabbing it and going in the Z direction, let's just call it the Z direction. It really, it's kind of crazy, but I, I think I did the best I could do. It's really, it's, I don't think there's an easy way to do it, you know, that I could find unless I'm missing something. The best way is to just be like crazy with how you switch perspectives. So I remember when I was starting out, the hardest thing for me was knowing like where I was in the 3D space. And so I would like, start to be working on something and I'd be really comfortable like swiveling around in perspective view, but I didn't really have an accurate idea of where I was or where I was placing things. Um, that's why we have all of these different fun views. These are so important. Yeah. These are everything. If you um, switch back and forth often, then you're going to be a lot less likely to have errors. So you build something, you might start off in perspective, but you really want to spend most of your time like in side view and front view um and that way you you can be sure that you're like right on point you just keep checking back and forth and yeah and then click the one point and not like the point behind it too right um yeah and <laughs> making sure that you have the right one so when you're in side view um that's an important thing to really be careful with um but if you took if you put your uh, shading on as a wireframe mm -hmm. or as wireframe unshaded or as x-ray, I like x-ray a lot, um, then you can see what you're doing a lot better. Yeah. Um, you can never be too sure unless you go and check in another view, but it's also pretty helpful to be able to manipulate the same points that are like right here. If you wanted something, if you wanted to pull this whole bottom edge out. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's, to... that's exactly what I was saying. Like if you did a window, you could potentially select that point behind it too. You know what I mean? And, you know, if you're looking at, if you're looking at a top view, there's four, you know, four, it's not four points, but it's four places, right? And um, right. because if you did a, if you selected that point in this view and then the point behind it, and then you, you move, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if that's explaining it correctly, but, um, but anyway, I think I got it, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, just like dragging over something with a marquee is often helpful to make sure that you're selecting all the points you want. Um, Cause like, most of the time what I'll do in side view is I'll like want to manipulate this whole like bottom half of a shape, right? And I don't want to just do like one vertex outwards. That's kind of going to like really mess with my, my uh, polygon. So I don't want like crazy topography. And so I'm going to select all the points that are right here in this region and pull them out, maybe even with soft select. I don't know if you guys have used that yet at all. But I, that's a great tool. Just press B and then you start to like push everything out in like a sort of gradient where it like fades out, but it still pulls out the other points. But yeah, just um, making sure that you're like meaning to select everything um, by uh, dragging the marquee and um, checking what you do and don't have selected in another view is um, really key there. Okay. But, does that make sense? 
Yeah, it makes sense. I would like to show you what I have, but I'm not sure if I can share my screen. Um, oh, I'll stop sharing if you uh, if you have it. Yeah, I do. Um, cool. Um, okay, let's see here. Screen one, share. So um, is that the right, can you see it? Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, so really what is, I don't know if that's, I guess I could turn the grid off. That might help. Um, turn the um, reference. Let's see, the reference is the oh, inner one, right? The, I'm sorry, what was that? The reference is on, but it's like the inner shape, right? Correct. The green is, is the lattice and then the black, if that's what the way it's showing up on your screen, is the reference. So yeah. Um, cool, so, that looks good. Yeah, so that's what I've come up with. So basically, it's like it's kind of like a diamond if you look at the top. But mm -hmm. um, and then if I shade it, it looks. Whoops. Let me go to shade it right here. I think it's okay. You know. Um, I don't know how they're how and I didn't know what this was. Is this a camera right here? Oh, uh, that looks like it. Try and select it. You have a default light set, I think. Um, what was uh, that? Front one shape. That's um, that's a camera. Yeah, you see how it's okay. selected um, with the camera icon over there in the left. Oh, over here. oh, okay, right. The front. So there, I, did I add that, or is that? <laughs> I mean, is that supposed to be there? Um, it comes with default cameras. Okay. Um, although I think there's you have two front cameras, so you must have accidentally added that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, the cameras initially are used to just give you like. Oh, this is the camera here, and then I could just delete that, right? But that's okay. Like you won't ever get points off for having a camera because that just shows that you're like trying to, um, you know, see multiple views. You know, and that's got a good it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I got. I don't know. I mean, it could be cleaned up a little bit. But does that look like kind of like what what we're what? Um, yeah, that looks really good. It's very smooth, um, okay. and it awesome. matches the reference, which is honestly like everything that's what you're trying to do is match the reference with uh, this yeah. method. Um, yeah, I was yeah. thinking, there, you know, that there was an easier way to do it, but then, you know, maybe not, <laughs> maybe that's just the way you do it, you know, because it's a little off at the top, you know, you can kind of see that, but, um, but anyway, it's okay, cool. I feel, I feel better now. All right. Awesome. Good. So, yeah, that looks yeah, really good. I'm going to move on to the, I'm sorry, what was that? I was just going to say like, this is an easier method in certain cases. Um, what makes it hard is that you're just getting used to the way it works and like learning like what outside points are going to do to inside points. That's a weird concept to get used to. But once you do get used to it, it will be easier and it won't feel like that. <laughs> yeah, I you did a good job. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like trying to swim with one arm tied behind your back, perhaps. Yeah, you, okay. <laughs> pretty much. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And then, yeah. Thanks for the, uh, uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah. And then I haven't started on the text. That's what I was going to work on tonight. Um, and I, I think probably if we just, if I just follow the videos, right. If we follow the videos, they're pretty match yeah. kind of like with what we're trying to do with the text, except for the bug. I was a little confused about that, but I'm just not that far yet. Oh yeah. Um, so the text, the way that like texts are, or fonts, sorry, are installed on computers is kind of weird. So like, it's not gonna, one font is going to read different on a Mac than it is a PC. And so yeah. since our graders use Macs and PCs, you know, we have to, um, basically bake that, uh, that font into the letters that you make as okay. a shape rather than a font because otherwise cross conversion will be will cause some issues 
Um, so yeah, the only the, the biggest issues I've seen with um, with that part of the assignment are um, not baking the texture in, um, which just involves like deleting hit by type history, um, and then not being able to find Arial Bold, which uh, I had a huge problem with when I did this assignment. It was like weird how it wouldn't show up. Um, I ended up having to uninstall Arial Bold or I had to uninstall the whole font and I just reinstalled it and then I restarted my computer and then it recognized it, but it wasn't okay. showing up before. For some yeah, time. so was that on a Mac or that was on a PC? That was on a PC. Really? Okay. And then mm -hmm. the way you in install a, a font. Um... Um, you can, there's all sorts of like free font sites. Um, basically just type in Google, like download Arial, and it'll give you the whole font family as a zip file. Um, you can open that zip and then you can uh, click all of the different fonts inside of it. And then once it opens, there will be a little button that says install and it just installs it straight into your system. Um, but Thanks. Maya won't necessarily recognize that right away. So you might have to restart your computer and then it'll... Oh. Yeah, so just because I have Arial in Word, it doesn't mean it's it's still on the system, right? Is that correct? I mean, I've always had Arial. Like, that's a typical, that's a pretty basic font. I've never not had Arial, but for some reason, Maya recognized that I had all of the Arial members of the font family except for Bold. So I just, uh, I'm not sure why. I think he was trying to choose the font Arial because it wouldn't have issues, but then it did. So you never know. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do when that happens is uninstall and reinstall. Oh, uninstall the font and reinstall it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then it should register. But not everybody had that issue either, so you might not run into it. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> you never know, I guess. Um, and then, like the first part, it talks about uh, the text um the text tab and it talks about font size tracking kerning scale leading scale is it just kind of like to make it it says for object and compositional balance that's just to the eye there's really no exact settings for that right um no it's it's not gonna be it's gonna be different for everybody let me show okay. you kind of what i did where open scene Okay, so you just have to make it look interesting, like try to use a good like design eye, I guess. So like okay. you wouldn't want to bevel it so hard that your edges get like weird looking and start like you start seeing red, you got to keep an eye on that. So mm -hmm. like when I first did this, I think I was getting some like red lines or some orange. And so that showed me that it was like not, um, it, it was making some weird uh, geometry. That's what you have to watch out for ultimately is weird geometry. Um, and then just try and like space things to where they make sense. They might be more pleasing to the eye. Um, okay. Just have some fun with it, honestly. Just like play around with bevels and, um, and extrusions and uh, try and make something interesting. But it's not really like a, um, it, it's not like a super technical um, exact sort of assignment. I see. Okay. Yeah. And then that bug or that work work around. Oh, well, yeah. The other thing was like the baked in layer or something. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. What so exactly. So that means that I am selecting an object and I'm going to edit delete by type history that bakes in all my history before mm -hmm. that. I had all these different, um, these different basically commands like history that I had done. Let me see if I can draw over here. I'm trying to get to know these tools on screen share. Well, I don't know, but I'm trying to draw over here and it's not working. But yeah, so I would like select this and you see like right over here and in, under inputs. Yeah. You see that? Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, I know what you're saying. So you deleted all that history and yeah. probably would want to save a version of it, you know. 
before that, just in case, right? I mean. Right, that's why um, for pretty much all of the assignments, um, he uh, he has you go through and save it off. Although I think I actually did keep a copy of that. Yeah, I did. Uh, so I have two shapes here. See that? I actually duplicated it. So I kept my previous shape and then I baked it in and now I have this shape too. So that way oh. you can see, you can go back and like change things. Um, yeah, I think I did that because I ended up like deleting type by history, realizing there was an error and one and wishing that I had duplicated it. So then I, I think I started over and I went back uh, and the next time I was ready to bake it in, I, I just duplicated it and then I baked in the, the duplicate. So that way you always have, you, you don't lose your work. Okay, yeah. So, and he indicates that duplicate the text geometry to bake in the construction history. So that's basically making a copy, right? Of the, is that the, is that a layer that you're on right now? Is that what that is? Um, what so, you're selecting there? So yeah, so I, okay. on the left hand, um, yeah, so on the, yeah, so that left hand side right there um, on the left hand of your screen, um, you have, ASU text one and then ASU text two. Are they layers or what are they? They are because I assigned them to layers. So I had a shape and that okay. was my text geo. See that? Mm -hmm. And then I did all of these things that you see over here on the inputs panel um, or channel box. I, uh, I did all those things. And then once I was finished designing my text, then I duplicated it. And that's where you see ASU text two. It's a shape over here, but over here it's assigned to a layer. That allows me to hide it, turn it on and off. And it tells me exactly what it is. Okay. So that way I can easily see what's baked and what isn't. All right. So yeah, okay. just um, make sure you, you assign those two things so they're on separate layers and uh, duplicate so you don't lose your work if you need to go back. And so we're only like dealing with like two files on this assignment, right? Or teams, like the lattice is one, and then this would be the the other um, file, right? I guess because he was it was he was saying to um, to actually uh, what was he saying? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Because for this, that's how I started, and then this is how I ended. It was right here. Okay, yeah, because there was the file that give, he gives you and then then the one you complete. And then with the text, it's like your own file that you start. And then he says to uh, save your scene as, no, wait a minute, he says zip. Zip the folder, I guess, right? Even though there's a lot of extra, extra um, there's a lot of extra folders in there, right? Even yeah, but so the thing with the project directory is that every time um, Maya wants to open a project, it's going to look for that project mm -hmm. folder. If you just copy all those files, then Maya doesn't get confused because it automatically sets all of those files, whether they're empty or not, to a project directory. So it's going to look for them and it's going it, to, it could break if, if they're not there. So you want to zip the whole thing um, unless you get specific instructions to zip like a couple of Oh yeah, that was the last, yeah, I think assignment two was, he just wanted the, the scenes, you know, and I think. Yeah. But this one, I think That's, he wants the project directory, you know, the whole directory, so um, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's typically what uh, he's going to ask for, because that's an important thing to, like, get used to doing. Um, yeah. Keeps okay. you more organized, too. But, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're worried about like not being exact on this either, I it was a little bit off the mark. See here, it's not like exact here. Oh yeah. And okay. it kind of comes out at the bottom. 
Yeah. He says like he wants it like right on there, but like that's kind of hard to get exact. So there's little spaces where it's not all the way like on top of the uh, model, but I mean, this got me a hundred, so I wouldn't worry about that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, because it's kind of organic, you know, it's not real, you know, it can't really be exact because, you know, yeah, so that makes, yeah, yeah cool. Then I, I feel pretty good about that one. Cool. Thanks. But yeah, the last assignment, yeah, the last, uh, the exercise too was, he just wanted the MV files, but yeah, I guess just pay attention to what he's looking for, right? So. Yeah, just get in the habit of setting that and then pay attention to what the submission is asking for. But for the most part, you're gonna be setting a full, uh, zipping up a full project directory. So make sure to uh, set it immediately at your root drive. Right. Paulette, how yeah. are you feeling about all this? A little bit better. Okay. I'm listening to everything. <laughs> Do you have any questions up to this point? I don't think so. I think the biggest thing was just like the root directory because it seems like that's where a lot of stuff went missing. So I'll be sure to get like a hard drive, put everything on there and then hopefully. hopefully it'll if be you better. don't have one, you should be able to use your C drive still. Just be careful that it's like in your root um, mm -hmm. or use OneDrive. I think that works too. I have to test that theory still, but um, okay. yeah. I just want to make sure it's not like nobody's like having to follow like a weird file path when they open. Yeah, it. right. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so does the project itself make sense? Like what you're going to be doing? Yes, this part does. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. If you think of yeah. any more questions. Yeah, and well, I just on that um, workaround or whatever, is that is hard to achieve or just follow his little video there and you should be good? Oh, baking it in? Yeah, that's not too hard. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, okay. And you really can't mess it up if you duplicate your work first. Okay. Yeah, and he, I guess he walks us through that, right, about duplicating, you know, and baking stuff in, right? There, there's a lot of videos. I watched them all, but they kind of all blend together. But um, I know. Yeah. Do you guys take notes at all? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 points, yeah. Yeah, especially like keyboard shortcuts. I find that to be yeah. really helpful. I, I actually printed, printed it out. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, for like every software program I learn when I'm learning it, I always print a sheet of, of uh, keyboard shortcuts out and I put it on my wall. And then that makes my life a thousand times easier. <laughs> yeah. I learned yeah. to print it out. I was like, it's a lot easier. <laughs> It'll make your workflow so much faster. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you try to use tools like soft select or, um, I don't know, get used to using edge loops um, and be really comfortable with switching perspectives and like using your uh, hot key menu oh, to yeah. do all sorts of things. This helps you work a lot faster, just knowing mm -hmm. where everything is, try to get used to like where things are gonna be and even better if you can, the keyboard shortcut for them. And then mm -hmm. this won't take so long, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your help on this. Um, no problem. I'm happy to help y'all out anytime. And uh, if you think of any more questions or you just are curious about 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys go to the conference last week? I watched some of it. I had work. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it was pretty neat. I didn't get to watch as much as I wanted either, though, because I was learning JavaScript. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think a lot, some of them are recorded, though, right? So. Um, yeah, some... they um, they post them up on their website afterwards. Okay. To check it out. Yeah. And, uh, 
Oh, tomorrow, if you guys want, I sent out that announcement about the master class. That looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Check that out if you get time. If you missed that one, the next one is going to be an Adobe conference. Adobe Max. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but it's amazing. Oh, that one sounds interesting. I did it last year. They offered it for free because of um, COVID <laughs> and they had it online. And so I was like obsessed. I was so into it. <laughs> it's just really well done. Um, the speakers are really engaging. They have all sorts of workshops and tutorials. They go through all the Adobe products and more. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of really cool insights from artists. I actually noticed my technique prove a lot improve a lot after that conference so okay and when is that that's, one that's like october 8th i want to say okay. and they're doing it free again this year because of covid oh nice <laughs> <Yeah>. that's nice <laughs> that's <real happening. laughs> so. you have to sign up for that uh yeah you just register um you can register anytime from now until like up to pretty much the date of the conference i think um, use your Adobe ID and, uh, then yeah, it's free. So, yeah. And then they keep all their videos on, um, on their website for the next year until they have the next conference. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, for all your help here and, um, I guess I'll see you around. All right. I'll be here next week. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, wait, no, I won't. Actually, I take that back. I'm changing my uh, hours. I don't want to make an announcement about this, but I figured I'd tell you all while you're here. Um, next week, I'm going to be in Colorado at a 21 Pilots concert. So I, I will not be at, yeah. I will not be online Thursday, but I'm probably going to switch it, switch my session to Wednesday or something. So I'll, I'll make an announcement and let y'all know. Sounds good. But yeah. Awesome. Enjoy the concert. That would be awesome. You know, yeah. Can we get time? Down. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. We'll see, you. see you later. Take care. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Do you have any more questions? How are you feeling at this point? I think a little better. Now that I know like my root issue was like, I think just the project directory. I think it makes me feel better. Like I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think as long yeah. as they can see everything, then it's better. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, why did I get an F on this? Like I worked so hard, but I'm like, okay, it makes sense if they weren't able to get into the, like see everything. Yeah, unfortunately I hate that that's, um, <laughs> cause it's not like you didn't do the project, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big deal for uh for this professor in particular. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I totally understand. Well, um, I'm working with him on like doing some sort of extra credit opportunity. Um, okay. Uh, like a discussion board sort of thing. I don't know what it is yet, but we're basically planning on offering extra credit. So just oh, look that would out be for that. very helpful. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to fail this class. <laughs> I hope that didn't bring you down too much. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm scared like the last project I turned in if I had the same issue now. So I'm wondering. I'm you sure. can always <laughs> ask. Yeah, let's check on that. Um okay. be good to do, but you could always ask if um there's like a follow-up project or something you could do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for extra credit. Um, with that, you want to be specific if you do ask and like have an idea in mind because you don't want to like have to put him to work for you to get credit. So right. like you could mention being interested in the spatial user interfaces uh, mm -hmm. project that his session C class is doing and then ask if you could get extra credit for that or something. Okay. And tell him I don't know if you're planning on doing this, but if you do, you can tell him I'd be happy to walk you through it and like. Okay. Well, thank you. Something. Like maybe not the full project because I was like a semester long project, but like something like <laughs> it. <helps>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> hopefully now that I have that figured out, hopefully the next two will be better. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a really important one. Um, did you want to uh, share your screen and we'll see if your last project was submitted that way? Yeah. Do you want me to pull up like the ORCA project itself or just um, like the rubric? Let's see. You, let's see. The last one that was submitted was the ORCA, huh? So, we oh, had the, um, it was Long the, linear. yeah. Okay, yeah, pull up uh, nonlinear and Boolean forms. And then now I'm like scared. Up. I'm like, I probably did the same exact thing. <laughs> Do you know where, um, where you submitted it or where, sorry, where you uh, saved it? I saved it like in a folder that's like for this class that's like in a school folder on my computer. So it's probably just a lot. <laughs> I thought I had it organized, but I'm like, no, oh, I guess not. Um, okay, so what I would try to do um, is uh, reset your project directory um, and move the folder. So like move the folder to your root drive and then okay. go in Maya, set the project to that new folder in the root drive. And then um, I would go ahead and resubmit it and request um, like email uh, our professor and like okay. ask him, like say that you went to uh, tutoring because you didn't know what you did wrong. Say that we yeah. talked about it, you figured it out and say like, hey, I think I fixed it. Can I resubmit with like maybe a late deduction? Yeah, uh, okay. they're, they're still grading it. So if you can get it in like as soon as possible, then they might okay. um, make that exception since you like, okay. Know what you did. Okay, I can try, I'll do that tonight and then just turn it in. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure you save it at the root file. You go in, you reset where the project directory starts to that folder in the root uh, drive, and then you zip it up and, and resubmit that way. Just reset, okay. And then don't forget to send John an email because otherwise I don't know if the graders will know about it, but yeah. Okay, got it. Well, thank you, I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Let me know if you run into any more issues. Alrighty. I will. Let me see. Did you find it? I was trying to look for right now. Okay, I think I found it. Uh, 
um was it in that folder the class folder yes yeah okay so i can see it's like saved onto my computer in like a list of different files okay yeah go ahead and uh let's move that folder and then you're gonna want to go into Maya after that. If you want to share your screen so that I can like let you know if it's working, then right. feel free. Share <laughs> screen. Give you a sec to get that situated. Okay, so let's see. Kingston, oh, that's an external drive. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Now it's yeah, use here. That. Okay. So okay. then I should restart Maya. I have it open now. Should I just quit it and then restart it? Um, is it? Oh, I had it open oh. to it. Oh. Um, try and hit set project. Let's see what happens. Project. Oh, you had exercise. Yeah, exercise two. Um, so then just select that folder, the exercise two folder. This one? Mm hmm. Okay. And then hit set. You don't want to open the folder, you just want to select it. That's the root folder. Even though it okay, on now the top go to it. Wait, what? Oh, because on the oh. top it still says the same thing. Yeah, um, I think it's probably best if you restart because okay. I don't really know what that would do. Okay, so I had don't Did save. You make any changes? You had mm -hmm. it saved before, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, and then hopefully we can just easily reset it. So I have to find the external drive, right? Um, so let's 
So open that up real quick without hitting set and just see what's in it. Everything. It still thinks your folder exists there. That's interesting. Okay, uh, go to your external drive then. Um, go down. Nothing's on my. Uh, is it hardware? Where did that drive go? I know, I was trying to find it when you guys were talking. I had it like plugged in. And I was like, I don't know where where it was. What was it called? Uh, Kingston. Hmm? Uh, Kingston. Okay. That was the name of like the external drive. But I have no idea. It's looking in. Try computer. She was like, What drive is that? It didn't have a name on it. That's weird that that drive doesn't have a name. That's unusual. Uh, click on it, see what's in that drive. I guess that must be your C drive. Okay. Mm. Go to, um, go ahead and exit out of your. Of my own. Um, yeah, I was just looking at something real quick, but okay. No, not out of Maya, sorry. Um, go to edit preferences. Or sorry, I'm thinking in Adobe. Um, no, no, go, you're to, good. <laughs> go to Windows, Settings and Preferences. And then, yeah, go ahead and hit that. And then um, go to Files and Projects. And then go ahead and click that folder button for default projects directory. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Are you, you're on a Mac. Okay. Um, so exit out of set projects directory, but stay in settings. I hit X or? Yeah, you can hit X on that. Okay. Keep that window open. Um, okay. Go to, um, there should be a submenu down at the bottom, dialogue style OS native. Yeah, hit uh, the OS native button. Okay, and then hit save. And then try and uh, set your project again. And then see. Oh. Yeah, there's, so now you can access that because before it was like Maya's weird interface that was prohibiting you oh, from getting there. Okay. So now you can set that as your project. Let's try it. And now try and open one of the files. Okay, cool. So they're all there. Let's see if they open correctly. This Don't save, because that's always the blank scene is always going to ask you. Okay. Okay, cool. So it opens, no issues. It's not broken. Um, I would check a few more of those, like check like the last couple iterations you had um, okay. and make sure. This was the last one I had done. 
Okay, cool. So you should be good to go then. Um, so one more thing I would suggest doing just to make your life a little easier mm -hmm. is go back to Windows settings preferences and then um, change your defaults. Uh, go back to files and rep or files and projects. And then set your default projects directory to that external drive. So that way you always have it there. You don't have to think about it. Okay. There you go. Save it. Okay. So that should help make a difference. And then it'll just be something that happens naturally. So okay. yeah, it looks like you're uh, you're good to go with that. So okay. I would zip it up, say you realize what happened and um, resubmit with the correct uh, directory. Okay, got it. I will do that tonight. Cool. Thank you so much for your help. No problem. <laughs> that was like the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I never did uh, Maya on my Mac. Like I just got a Mac, so I never like okay. really had to worry about that before. Um, mm -hmm. but Macs are really weird in, in terms of like folder structure compared to a PC. And so like you would have had no way of even thinking about putting it on that drive because it doesn't show up. So, <laughs> right. I know I was like trying, when you guys were talking, I was like, where is it? Like, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm glad we figured it out though. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know in an announcement when I'll be around next week if you have any more issues. Um, probably Wednesday though. Um, okay. And then yeah, if you have any more problems and you just like need to chat about it, like if you have any issues this weekend, I'll be around too. So. Okay. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. You have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thanks for stopping in. Oh, thank you. <laughs>